it is. The Bible says mark that person and it says to avoid them. Well, that don't mean go to their meetings. Amen. That's right. Amen. It doesn't mean to hang out at the fellowship. Amen. It doesn't mean uh, uh, to um, hobnob with them either, or go out and eat with them because they're going to buy your meal. Right. doesn't mean to play politics with them. I really uh, commend uh, our pastor for what he did uh, this past year uh, in um, in the camp meeting or whatever they call it, fellowship or whatever it is, and taking a stand. And, and, and you know, he lost some friends and, and so forth of it. But he took a stand, it says, to avoid them. That's what we're supposed to do. I had to do that with some of my family members. I had to do that with old friends of mine. They says, oh, this, this book can be, it can be updated. It, it's, it's, it's old fashioned and no, so sir. forth. No, Bible right. says to mark them and avoid them. It says in verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. They're not serving the Lord Jesus. Now they claim to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but they're not serving the same Lord of Jesus Christ I am. It says, but their own belly. And by good words, and that's how they do it, and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Well, tonight we are not supposed to be the simple. That's right. We're supposed to be the wise. We're supposed to be knowledgeable. We're supposed to be uh, uh, have understanding and discretion. Also, you don't have to turn there. And I can't pronounce these names anyway, so I'm just going to give you, give you this. In 1 Timothy, Paul gave us the example. In 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, Paul marks nine individuals. He gives us two in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. He gives us two more in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. He names uh, 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 two, uh, two, one more in his household in 2 Timothy 1, 16. In 2 Timothy 3, 8, he gives us two more. And I can name these, I can say the names. In 2 Timothy 4, 10, the preacher preached on, uh, is Demas. And then 2 Timothy 4, 14, Alexander the coppersmith. Paul names. He just didn't put a mark on them. He just give them somebody and said, I don't want to offend nobody because I really want to tell nobody y'all. He didn't just say to Timothy, just keep this between me and you, because I don't, you know. Boy, he named them. He named them. And the Holy Spirit of God knew that we was going to be reading 1st and 2nd Timothy. I hope you're reading it. And we're going to see as an example of Paul naming those Christians that were causing divisions, that were contrary to the doctrine which we have learned. And he's telling Timothy, you better watch out for these jokers. They're troublemakers. Yep. Yeah. Now, naming apostates and heretics is biblical, but it's not popular. I will give you a couple right here. And what I've always found and, and uh, over the years, and, and preacher may have found something different. If he does, and I'm wrong, and he's right. What I've found is if someone's not giving you a doctrinal statement, if they have a ministry, or uh, if they want to call it a singing ministry, or a preaching ministry, or, or they're a preacher, or an, or an evangelist, or a missionary, or a missionary board, they don't have a doctrinal statement up there. There's a reason. Yes, sir. They're trying to hide something. Yes, sir. They're trying to appeal to the masses. Yep. I can give you three or four names here. These are your buddies or, or your <laughs> friends. And take it up to them, okay? <laughs> See the preacher. He's the one in charge. <laughs> First one. Now, you may not know all these. I don't know. I don't know how often y'all get out or look at things and listen to stuff. Number one is C.T. Townsend. He has no doctrinal statement. One is Joe Arthur, very popular preacher, evangelist. Tom Messer of the Trinity Baptist College. Now you would think of all people. Yes, sir. A college <coughs> don't have a doctrinal statement. How's that? Hmm, you gotta think and wonder about that. Uh, Phil Kidd, I know you've heard of him. He has no doctrinal statement. Now I got this from a good source, a very good friend of his. He need to tell him I can share it. But I can tell you that his two sons had just started contemporary churches, Phil Kids. And then he condoned them on his website. He said, that's great. They took off Baptists off their names. And he said, that's okay. You don't have to have Baptists in your name. Now, that's a real problem. No wonder he has no doctrinal statement. And our neighbor right down the road is WKJV. You would think that a radio station would have a doctrinal statement. But they don't. I will give you a good, it's kind of short to the point, Example of someone who has a good, uh, it's not extensive, by a long shot. And it says, we believe the Bible 
to be the inspired, infallible, authoritative Word of God, preserved pure, accurate, and without error in the King James Bible. Amen. And then they give references. And that's Dr. Greg Little of Victory Baptist Church in college. Now I'll give you this other guy. It's more extensive and more in-depth. It says, we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, just like it says. We believe that the King James Bible is the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures. All 66 books of the Bible are complete. We believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the verbally and plenary inspired Word of God. The Scriptures, King James Bible, is an air, infallible, perfect, pure, inspired Word of God. That God has preserved His Word from the beginning of time. Therefore, the Bible is our final authority concerning all matters of faith and practice. The scriptures shall be interpreted according to their normal grammatical historical meaning. And all issues of interpretation and meaning shall be determined by the pastor and him alone. The King James Bible shall be the official and only translation used by this church in preaching, teaching, and all printing literature. The King James Bible does not merely contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. We reject all other versions or perversions that are based on the critical texts underlying them, such as the NIV, the NASV, the New King James, the TEV, the UBST, the RSV, the CEV, the H, the Holy Christian Standard Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, along with others such as the Living Bible, the Evidence Bible, the Message, the Bible, the Rhyme, etc., etc. We are a King James Bible believing church, not a TR believing church. It makes it plain. When the Mac uh, Masoretic Hebrew text or the Texas Receptus Greek text disagrees with the King James Bible. The King James Bible is correct and the Hebrew and Greek text is wrong. Yes. Every word, letter, punctuation, chapter, and verse division has been preserved, inspired, infallible, and then errant in our King James Bible. So I'll let you guess who that is. The first question. The first question I've suggested you write down. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put ours, but I didn't have a copy of ours, so you have to forgive me. Um, first question. If the King James Bible is your favorite Bible, if the King James Bible is your favorite Bible, what is your second favorite Bible version to use? You'd be surprised that I have gotten all kinds of responses from this on the internet. I have this up on our internet. People put, oh, I, I like the Holy Christian Standard Bible. Or I like the Revised Standard Version. <laughs> well, the answer is, I don't have a second one. That's right. That's right. Very okay. few say that. I don't have no other Bible but the King James. That's the correct answer. Amen. If they say, oh, I have a second favorite. Or many of them will say, oh, well, I use only the King James. And I carry the King James in the pulpit. And that's what we use. But, you know, in my private study. In my private study, I like I like using this version. And wrong answer. Right, right. Man. I have a bunch of perversions in my office. I got somewhere around eighty something. But I don't use them to study. I use them to show where they're wrong. That's right. That's why I use them. I don't study them. I don't read them. I'll go and see what scholar so and so says. I go to the King James Bible when I want to know what God says. Yes, sir. right. Well, there are six major translations that God has used with the King James Bible being the seventh, which is the number of perfection and completion. Paul speaks of perversion found in Galatians chapter 1. Turn over to Galatians chapter 1. Now, there's no name to this perversion other than what he says. I guess that's good enough for me. But all of the perversions that I just read off that list, they all say this very thing. Look at um, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, Paul said to the Galatian church here, I marvel, and we should marvel too when our friends and our brethren do the same thing. I marvel when that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Yes, you put any perversion there you want to, and they preach another gospel. Yes, sir. They take out the blood. They change, uh, change it to death. They take out uh, hell. They take out the virgin birth. And right on down the line. Verse 7, it says, Which is not another, but there be some, some that trouble you. You know what? We have some today. I just read off some. 
And I'm going to read off some more in just a minute. That trouble. But as the preacher's been saying for weeks and weeks and months and months, this ain't something that just happened. Right. It's been coming along for years yes, and sir. years and years. And we just kind of gradually sit down and we said nothing and we really hadn't made a real commotion about it. And we hadn't really earnestly contend for the faith. And said, well, you know, that's 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 Dr. John R. Ryan. Yes, sir. It's okay if he says it. No, sir. Or that's Dr. Curtis Hudson. He's a great man. He's done a lot of good things. Be sure he had done a lot of great things. But if he corrects the word of God, he's wrong. That's right. Right. It says, which is not another. There's only one gospel. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Therefore, to me, the Bible definition of a pervert is someone who perverts the gospel. <laughs> yeah. They're a pervert. Someone who creates this book, who adds to it, takes away, they're a pervert. Yep. That's what it says. That's why I look at it. If I'm wrong, yes, someone tell me. <laughs> so they're the pervert. Yeah, amen. That's worse than, in my opinion, breaking this Bible is worse than breaking some little kid. Yes, sir. Is it not? Sure it is. They're a pervert. And their perversions have uh, perverted the gospel of Christ. Verse 8, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That means the, the living Bible is cursed. Yep. The NIV is a curse. The New King James Bible is a curse. Yep. And right on down the line, mm -hmm. they're a curse. Yep. And I believe the men who translated them yes, and sir. the committees, I believe yes, they're sir. cursed. That's what it says. Verse 9, if that's not enough, he repeats it and he says, as we said before, and he just said it, not like they forgot it. So say I now again, just make sure you got it. If any man preach, any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And then he goes on to say, hey, are you persuading men or God? That's right. Who are you persuading? We're supposed to be children of God and supposed to bring, be bringing pleasure to our Savior. That's what it says. I will give you a couple of examples, I believe, with each of these. This first question again was, if you didn't get it, if the King James Bible is your favorite Bible, what is your second favorite Bible version to use? By the way, I got what? That'll mean nothing. <laughs> Bob Jones University. Listen to what they say about their favorite Bible. Quote, I got all this right off the internet, right off their sites, everybody out there. Although Bob Jones University does not hold to a King James only position. Now is that plain? Although Bob Jones University does not hold to a King James only position, which that's no surprise, we continue to hold the widely used King James Version as the campus standard in the classroom and in the chapel pulpit. See, they hold it in their pulpit and they teach from it, they say, but they're not King James Bible only. They belittle it. They got a second favorite. I've been there to the bookstore. So they got the NIV and the English Standard Version. And what I found that they got two or three different ones. It says the position of the university on the translation issue has not changed since the founding of the school in 1927. That's a lie. And that's what I, that's what I thought. I thought that was a lie just to cover them up, just like um, Hiles Anderson does the same thing. Yes, sir. It says we believe in the verbal preliminary inspiration of the Bible in the original <laughs> manuscripts. And we believe that God has supernaturally preserved every one of his inspired words for us today. However, however, this is a lie again, from the founder of the present administration, we have never taken the position that there can be only one good translation in the English language. Really? Well, that's a lie. They not only lie about the Word of God, they lie about their own father. Yes, yeah. sir. And grandfather. Yeah. Question number two. Is the King James Bible the Holy Scriptures mentioned in 2 Timothy 3.16? Is the King James Bible the Holy Scriptures mentioned